All right, number 15. Okay, so I've had a look at this question and it's all about straight lines. And I, I already see some keywords like perpendicular. So for this kind of topic, before you even start the question, always write down this equation, which is y equals mx plus c. Okay, so this is your standard straight line equation where m here is your gradient, i.e. the slope of the line, and c is the y-intercept, so it's where it hits the y-axis, yeah? This is literally fundamental. When you get this, you can solve any anything to do straight lines. So now we begin the question, yeah? So the straight line L1 has equation 2y equals 3x minus 5. So straight away, make it look like the standard form, yeah? So you got to make it y equals. In other words, divide the equation by 2 to get y equals 3x minus 5 over 2. Okay, so our gradient in this case is 3. So m is the gradient. Now the straight line L2 is perpendicular to L1. So perpendicular is literally means that if one line is facing this direction, the other line is going to be at a 90 degree angle in this direction. So this is a perpendicular line, L1 and L2. So with perpendicular lines, this mean, this this has an, um, an impact on the gradient. If the gradient in this case is 3 for L1, that means the L2 gradient is going to be its inverse negative reciprocal. So it's going to be minus 1 over 3. Okay, so you flip upside down, 3 becomes 1 over 3, and you change the positive sign to a negative sign. So immediately we know that the equation of a line for L2, y equals minus a third x plus some unknown c, which we need to figure out, yeah? So that's cool. Now we know that this line, which is perpendicular, passes through the point 9 minus 1. So all you want to do here is plug in this coordinate on that line. So we know that x is 9, y is minus 1, we can get the value of c. So let's do that, yeah? So we can say at 9 minus 1, we're going to have, I'm going to use blue pen, minus 1 for y equals minus a third times 9 plus c. Okay, and just simplifying that equation, minus a third times 9 in your calculator gives us minus 3, and left with plus c, and then adding 3 across, you're going to get minus 1 plus 3, which is 2. So c equals 2. So updating our equation, we now have y equals minus a third x plus 2. Okay, so this is usually the end of the question, but it, it, it gets a little bit extra, yeah? So we found the equation. It says give your answer in the form ay plus bx equals c. So just put, all right, put y and x on the same left-hand side, yeah? So we need to basically move minus a third x to the left. By adding it, so this would be y plus a third x plus 2. Uh, sorry, equals 2. Oof, almost messed up. Yeah, guys, and um, yeah, that's it. That's the end of the question. All right, 16. So a particle P is moving along a straight line. The fixed point O lies on this line. So at time t seconds, the displacement or the distance s meters of p from o is given by this equation here at time t seconds the velocity of p is v meters per second find expression for v in terms of t okay so a useful fact with this is that we're going to use the method of differentiation to go from s to v yeah so the way it works is that this is usually the process to go from displacement to velocity we need to differentiate this with respect to t and to go from velocity to the next one acceleration differentiate the velocity equation by t again so this is also known as ds over dt this part here so that should be the same and acceleration is, is also known as dv over dt let's find expression for v so let's go ahead and differentiate this equation here yeah to differentiate you just drop the power and multiply here and then subtract the power by one so three times four is 12 and you got t and subtract this by one you get two Next one, you drop the power of 2 down, so you've got 6 times 2 is 12t. Subtract, subtract the power by 1, you get just t to the power 1, or just t. And lastly, differentiate 5t, well, you're just left with plus 5. Because this is t to the power 1, drop the 1 down, 1 times 5 is 5, and you're left with t to the power 0. Anything to the power 0 is 1. That's why it vanishes. Yeah, and that's it, guys. That's the answer to A. Now for B, it says um, find the time at which the acceleration of the particle is 6. So first things first, we need to find the acceleration, yeah? So acceleration, again, you differentiate now the velocity equation with respect to T. 
So once again, drop the power 2 down, you get 2 times 12 is 24. Subtract the power by 1, you're left with t to the power 1, which is t. Same thing applies here. Differentiate minus 12 t, left with just minus 12. That's it. Now it says here, so we're not actually done yet. It says find the time, the value t at which the acceleration is 6. So in other words, when a is 6, what's t? So just replace a with 6. You just solve this equation right here. Find the value t. So what we could do is add 12 across, so you get 18 equals 24t. Divide this by 24, and you should get t equals 0 0.75. All right, number 17. So the histogram shows information about the age of all the passengers traveling on a plane. So no one on the plane is older than 80 years old. All right, so this is limited between 0 and 80. So 24 passengers on the plane are aged between 40 and 60 years. All right, so we're talking about this region here, yeah, this block right here. We know that the total number of passengers is 24. Okay, work out the total number of passengers on the plane. So in other words, all the rest of the areas. Now, the problem with this question is that we don't actually know the height, the frequency density of each of these values. So here we kind of have to try and figure this out. If we can figure out the height, we can easily work out the area of each rectangle. So let's look at the first block here. Let's try and figure out what this height could have been to get this answer of area 24. Well, looking at the width here, we know that the width is 20, right? So we know that 20 times something gives us 24. Let's call this height uh, x, yeah? Actually, better yet, let's do it a bit different. Let's count how many blocks there are, yeah? So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's call the height 6x. So the height is 6x. So therefore, this means that 20 times 6x, which is 120x, must equal 24. Dividing this across to find x, x should be 0 0.2. Okay, perfect. Now, what, is the, what this is telling us here, so what this is telling us now that for, since we can try and work out the, the, the height of every single block, we can easily find the area of each block in terms of x, then replace x as 0 0.2 and you got the total area, okay? So just quick recap, this is 24, yeah? Total value is 24 here. So now let's work out the rest. So let's start the small block. We can see the height is just 2, so the height is just 2x. The width is 10. 10 times 2x is 20x. Likewise, the next one, yeah? Let me just delete this stuff. So we have now a height here, so maybe I'll zoom in from now on. So guys, you got, let's see, 1, 2, so it's 5, so it's 9x, so it's 9 by 10 is 90 so 90x okay next one this long one check it out so you've got 5 10 15 20 25 30 32 so the height is 32 x and this is a skinny block of 5 so 5 by 32 is 160 x okay next one here next rectangle you got width for 15 15 by 10 150 150 x this is 24 whole, yeah, no x's, yeah. Last one, uh, move to the right a bit. Hold on, zoom out actually. So you got a width here of 20, and it goes up by 4. So 4 times 20 is 80x. That's it, guys. Now, all you want to do is literally add up all of these x's, yeah. And when you add them all, you should get, just to be clear what I got, you should get 500x okay plus the 24 yeah now since you know x is 0 0.2 you plug in and i'm just going to double check this now so 500 times 0 0.2 plus and you should get voila so you should get 500 replace it 0 0.2 plus the extra 24 you should get total number of passengers of 124 people yeah and that's your answer 124 Okay, not bad. Now, next last bit, the last bit here. Yeah? So a passenger on the plane is picked at random. Work out an estimate for the probability that this person is older than 55. Okay, so we need to find out how many people first are older than 55. And then that's going to be out of 124 people. So people older than 25, so let me just cut this down. Ah, it's not bad. Older than 55 looks like it's around this mark here. If we know, and we can kind of see that this block is now being split into, like this is probably a quarter of the whole rectangle here. If the whole rectangle is 24, this is, uh, you divide 
this by 4. So it'll be 24 over 4. This would be a total area of 6. So then the total number of people which is 6 plus 80x. And we, since we know x is 0 0.2, this means we've got a total number of people of 80 times 0.2 of 22. So 80 times 0 0.2 plus 6 gives us 22 people older than 55. So that's this total area. So, yeah, so this means that the probability of the, that this person is older than 55, well, there's 22 of them out of 124 passengers. Okay, number 18. So, expand and simplify this triple bracket and show you're working clearly. Okay, for triple bracket problems, a super easy way to do this is to always expand the last two brackets using the FOIL method, yeah? So FOIL literally just means you multiply the first term with the first term of the second bracket, then with the second term, and then you pick the plus 3 and you multiply against the x and the minus 7. Okay, so nice and easy. So let's just ignore x plus 2 for a second, yeah? So I'm going to rewrite it here. We're going to have x plus 2, and now we're going to multiply out these right two-hand side brackets, yeah? So you've got 2x and x, so just put a big bracket like this. You get 2x squared. Um, 2x times minus 7 is minus 14x, 3 times x is plus 3x. And by the way, combining these two before you times the last term, minus 14 plus 3 is minus 11x. So let me just update that. And last, lastly, 3 times minus 7 is minus 21. Okay, so that was easy. Now what we want to do next is repeat the, the FOIA method, but this time with the linear term and the quadratic term, yeah? So once again, just put your arrow, so x times 2x squared, and then 11x, and then times it with minus 21. And then repeat the process with 2. So 2 with that, with this, and finally with that. So that's what we do. Now, my advice is always, try when you multiply out, line it up nicely, yeah? So x times all of these first terms, you're going to get a 2x cubed, then minus 11x squared, and a minus 21x, okay? Next, I'll change the color of the pen. You can times everything by 2 now, yeah? So 2x squared times 2 is 4x squared. So I'm going to carefully line it under the x squared column, yeah? That way it makes adding easier. 2 times 11x is minus 22x. And lastly, 2 times minus 21 is minus 42. And now we just collect like terms, yeah? But what I usually do is just put a line like this and just collect them. So adding downwards, 2x cubed is just 2x cubed. 11x squared plus 4x squared is um, minus 7x squared, minus 21x, minus 22x is minus 43x, and finally just minus 42. And that's it guys, that's literally done. All right, part B. So here they want us to make M the subject of this equation here, okay? Ooh, so with these kind of questions, you've got M at the top and M at the bottom. Now, what I would personally do is always clear the fraction, yeah? So definitely move these lot across to the left. So to clear the fraction, you're going to multiply 2m minus y to the left. So we're going to get p squared times 2m minus y equals, and we're left with now, x plus m. Okay, so now we begin. So expanding the bracket, you're going to get p, um, p squared times 2m, which is 2p squared m minus p squared y equals x plus m now a nice trick is to line up all the terms you're interested in on one side and the other terms that you don't you that don't have m on the other side so in this case this is perfect and but now we want to move plus m to the left and then after we do that we're going to move the rest to the right so let's have a look so 2 pm 2 p squared m stays here we're going to minus m across we're also going to plus this term to the right so we're going to get positive p squared y and we still got a plus x and yeah almost done now all you want to do here is to f isolate the m yeah so this is the, the tricky bit to isolate the m you just take the common factor so m goes out and you're left with a 2p squared minus take divide by this by m you get one and then copy the right side now lastly to make m the subject just divide this entire term across so lastly you're going to get x uh not x you're going to get m equal to the right hand side divided by that bracket term 2p squared minus 1 and yep that's it this is this question solved by the way there is alternative answers to this you might have something like x plus p squared y or 
like a, like a different way of writing this these letters you don't have to write everything in this order it can be y p squared or x plus y p squared you could even write minus one plus two p squared it doesn't matter as long as you got the same terms in you know this as long as the signs are correct and it looks kind of like that but anyway guys let's move on to the next one okay question 19 so the 25th term of an arithmetic series is 44.5 and the sum of the first 30 terms of this arithmetic series is 765. Okay, before I read the, the actual question, let's go ahead and um, write everything related to arithmetic series, okay? So in this case, we have something known as the nth term, so we need an equation for that. And we also have the sum of some number of terms. There's two formulas for this. The first one is the, the nth term, which I'm going to call the un. And the general formula for the nth term is always a plus n minus 1 times the common difference d. Now for the sum version, you have the sum of the n terms, and this is actually given in, in the front of the uh, front of your formula sheet, in the front of the book, for, sorry, front of the paper. And the formula here is always n over 2 times 2a plus, and then the rest is similar, n minus 1 times d. Okay? Now, what we're going to do right here is we're going to try and plug in these terms, yeah? And just update these equations. And then we're going to have an, basically simultaneous equations in terms of a and d. So let's check it out. So plugging in the fifth term, so this means u25, and that's meant to equal 44.5, yeah? So u25 is supposed to equal a plus, and now we know n is 25, right? So n take away 1 is 24, d, and that's supposed to equal 44.5. So here is our first equation, yes? Yeah? So I'm going to highlight it, so to avoid confusion. So you can ignore the u25 now. Next one is the sum of 30 terms, so s30. And again, using the formula on the left, we've got n over 2, so 30 over 2, which is 15 times, and we've got 2a, which is the same, plus, you've got n minus 1. Since n is 30, 30 take away 1 is 29, d, and that's supposed to equal 765. Okay, so, next step here now, yeah? I'm going to try and do this, I'm going to solve this simultaneously in a very quick way, yeah? So, using these two equations, um, instead of, like, expanding the second equation where you got 15 times the rest i'm going to divide 15 across the right side because 765 is divisible by 15. so this means the bottom equation is, is going to be left with 2a plus 29d so we ignore that 765 divided by 15 i got 51. okay so this is one equation now looking at the first equation here we want to somehow solve this simultaneously right so my tip is to try and make the coefficient of a the same so this is literally 1a I'm going to double this equation to get 2a, yeah? So times in this whole equation by 2, we're going to get 2a plus uh, 48d, and that's going to equal 89. Okay, so far so good. Now I'm going to subtract these two equations, yeah, to eliminate 2a's, yeah? But I'm going to subtract it upside down, so I'm going to do this equation, subtract to the top line. So 2a take away 2a is 0, 48d take away 29d, is um what did i get i got 19d and 89 take away 51 is 38 you could do upside down but you just get negative signs and then dividing 19 across then you get a common difference of two now before we, again before we even solve this question yeah we're going to just find out what dna is yeah because we don't have that so since d is two we can find a easily yeah so i'm going to go back to the very first equation here so updating that equation there you got a plus 24 times 2, which is 48, equals 44.5. And therefore, solving for A by subtracting 48 across, you should get a negative 3.5. Now, so we've got two, two terms, A and D. So when you've got A and D, you can literally solve anything now. You can find any term, you can find any sum, and you're good. So looking at the question, it says find the 16th term of an arithmetic series. The 16th term. So that, that, that just means find U16. So u16, using the general formula, is a plus n minus 1d. We know what a is. a is minus 3.5 plus n minus 1. 16 take away 1 is 15 times d. d is 2. And that's it. Plug this in your calculator and you should get a result of 26.5. And that's it, guys. This is your number 19 done.